Brothers and sisters, as always when I'm doing a serial, I'm hurried to finish it and to go on for the next because I'm so full of ideas. <laughs> but this particular series is a very big pleasure and I think it's the best I did so far. So let's go on with part 7 of our funny religious history of West Europe. <laughs> Dominique et Nicanique s'en allaient tout simplement Ô oh Dieu, pauvre et chantant En tout chemin, en tout lieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu Il ne parle que du bon Dieu Abra or Ibrahim Let's see how he was Abram was married to Sarah Modern family, double income no kids. Yeah, they had no children and could easily afford to hire a charwoman. So they had a slave called Haga. And this Haga was a super hot chick. Damn hot. Abram was since a long time in a kind of sexual hibernation because Sarah wasn't that active anymore and gave up the idea to become pregnant since a very long time. But Hagar, she knew how to help the old Abram out of his pants. So, nine months later, Hagar gave birth to Ishmael. Now, Sarah sees the little Ishmael and, aha, uh -huh, the old cheated on me. And how it happens with women. She got a hormonal thrust and gave birth to Abraham's son Isaac. So you can read in the Old Testament, Abraham is split between those two women and had to take the decision. What can I say? It's like today in Abraham's time were also some social and cultural obligations. And so he decided to stay with his wife Sarah and his legal legitimate son Isaac. Jealousy of Sarah. Abraham was forced to ban Hagar and sent her in the desert. And therefore, Ishmael became the founder, or the founding father, of the Ishmaelit, the Arabs. In the Quran, this history is turned absolutely in the inverse. Abraham, in the Quran, recognizes the super bright Hagar and builds together with Ishmael the Kaaba in Mecca. What is now histor historically right? Only one of these stories can be right, and therefore they fight eye for eye since thousands of years. See today the Jews against the Palestinians, and always there is something to fight for in this region. But also Christians against Jews. This is the same case, all due to this inheritance fight. Let's take some example. Let's see the Pius brothers and this Holocaust denier Williams. People forget always that anti-Semitism is the core, it's the basic of the Christian business. In the Middle Ages, all monks and pastors preached, Jews killed our God. It's a work in God's will and it's God's name now to kill all these Jews. Therefore, these monks were made saints. And still, until today, they remain saints for having preached and having killed Jews. See, during the Holocaust, Pope Pius was quiet. He said nothing. And not even only that, he helped also the Nazi elite to escape through the Vatican to Argentina. 
in the Catholic Church until the late 70s in the Friday liturgy, so the Friday Mass, they still prayed in Latin for the perfidie judie, for the perfid unfaithful Jews. Our actual Pope has, in the year 2007, reintroduced this form of Mass. And for the Easter Mass, he prayed, the Jews should recognize Jesus. What the bullshit. A Jew with Jesus is not longer a Jew. But always there is a subliminal message, an underground message in such a prayer. And this message is, like ever it was, Jews have nailed our Christ on the cross. The church should be happy that they did that. Without that, they would not have this corporation, this business, this, this firm. A small gratitude you should at least expect from the Pope for his job. In part 8, I will have a lot more of my maybe surprising analysis. For today, if you like my serial and if you like my channel, please subscribe. Your comments and your critics are always welcome. Your thumb up is important to share this message with many other people. What left to say? Caress you and thank you very much.